Hi everyone. In this video, I'll share my understanding of how JWT authentication works with ASP.NET Core Web API. Within this video, I'm going to focus on the bare bone implementations. Uh, I hope to share the understanding of how JWT authentication works in a simple and clear manner. Without further ado, let's take a look at how client and the web work together in a typical JWT authentication workflow. In the first step, the client will call the server to get an access token by providing a valid credential, uh, which usually could be a username and a password. On the server side, it will verify the username and password. It will then issue a JWT token, which is signed by a secret that only the server knows. Once the client gets the token, it will put the token on the header of any subsequent calls in a specific field named authorization. And then it will start to request protected resources. On the server side, once it gets a request, it will then go ahead and check the integrity of the token. If the token passed the check, it will use the claims on the token to do the authorization. If the user is allowed to access the resource, then it will return the result. Otherwise, an unauthorized error will be returned. So that is a basic flow. Well, there are two things that need to happen on the server side to issue the token and then to verify the token. Let's see how can they be implemented. Firstly, I created a token controller. It takes the route of token and accepts HTTP POST. This method gets an access token using the login, which contains username and password. Let's see the details. It firstly verifies if the login is valid. Here, you can see I hard coded the username as star and the password as one, two, three. In reality, though, it could be database query or any other means to verify the credential. Next, I create a JWT security token object. I put in some basic information like issuer, audience, and the claims, just like a dictionary of payloads. I assign the expiration to be like five minutes from now, and then I supplied a signed credential. Pay attention to the secret that I'm using here. It is a string that only the server knows. And then with the help of JWT security token handler, the token is signed with the secret and converted to the form of final access token. Let's see it in action. When username and password is set correctly, and when I say send, you can see the access token being returned. As you can see, step one, two, and three are implemented. Let me show you how I implemented steps four, five, and six. Firstly, for any route that requires authorization, uh, protected information in this case, I will add authorized attribute so that uh, ASP.NET Core will know to do the authorization before returning the information. The authorization logic is configured in startup class. Let me show you what I mean. Firstly, I called add authentication with the option to set up the schema for the authentication so that ASP.NET Core will know to use zero token for authentication. Then I set up a token validation perimeter. Notice that here the secret is passed in again, and that is exactly the secret used for signing the token before. This is the key for the backend to check the integrity of the access token. Once that's done, we need to enable the authentication and authorization middleware 
that can be done by calling use authentication and use authorization on the app. Let's see it in action. Firstly, I'm going to invoke protect info without the authorization header. And I'm returning the 401 unauthorized. Now, let me get the access token by the token endpoint we built before. I'll put the token in the authorized header and see what will happen. Hooray! The token passed the authorization and the message is returned successfully. Thanks for watching. The code I've been showing is uploaded to a GitHub repository. I'll put the link in the description below. If you like this video, want more of this sort, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now I'll see you the next time.